I've been the defend the Glenn guy. That's that's been me. I've been the stepping up for AG. And not even like no, I'm stepping up for AG. And just for like when it, it makes sense too. Wow. Like when you guys are just like the, the nonsense. Of, like a lot of people talking about the soft zone coverage is what they were bitching about. Turns out Good they were Lord. in fifty six percent of the time, and they got fucking burned in the main coverage. Yeah. Nick, actually, where, where you at the AG stuff? I mean, you gotta dial up some pressure. I know they're in man when they do when they do have to go pressure there, but you need something. You're not getting there with four. We need that. I would like to see Brian Branch specifically because we can see what he does. We can see what he um, does when he gets in the backfield on the run plays. I would like to see him in more pressure packages going to the quarterback. Actually, so I would idea. actually love to see some Brian Branch pressures. I'm not thrilled with them, honestly. I, he has to dial up something because he doesn't have the personnel right now, and I blame Brad Holmes for that not making a move at the deadline. I agree. I, I, I blame at the deadline. Um, as much as I love Brad Holmes, he does phenomenal in the draft. I blame a little bit at the draft as well. You, you got the piece to, to be in the middle there for you, and he's played 11 snaps, and that's Roger Martin in the third round. And then it's also, oddly enough, what was given up to get Chase Young was the third round pick, and it, it is annoying. I, I know you were speaking with Neil, and Neil, Neil was like, uh, he says, oh, Martin May, he didn't want to make the deal. Brother, that team is like it's not been in good shape in a while. Martin May, he was also clinging on to his job there as well. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you make the best deal to save your ass? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. But uh, we do have AG talking about the pass for us. I don't know. I don't really like what he had to say. Mm. Not a big fan. So let's hear it. I'm not going to get some of the other edge defenders. You know, how do you get a, yeah. like, like, when they're kind of in a slump like this, how do you get more pressures out of them? You know what? <clears throat> That's one thing as coaches that we got to continue to try to figure out on. Um, and I guess I can't say figure out, keep coaching our guys on how do we um, generate these pressures, especially the way teams are playing us now. Because teams now, they're blocking everything up. Because like, they know that Aiden's a guy. So they're putting two guys on him. And usually with the other guys, when you watch the tape, they have guys maxed out. And a guy who was in one-on-one, -on -one, that guy has got to be able to win. And that's us as coaches continue to teach these guys how to make sure you always get on edges in those situations. It's not the easiest thing, all right? Um, but, man, we are coaching our ass off to try to get those guys to be able to do that. And I think the guys are trying their butts off. We just got to continue emphasizing those things. I think um, going to last, I think Pascal did some pretty good things as far as getting on the edges. So we got to continue to work with that player on that side. Uh, that was AG honestly solid at loss. Like, like he, he even stumbled up there like a little bit in the beginning there. He's like, I don't, we don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, wait, Chris, can you play actually one more time? I apologize. I 100%ed it, but I just got to catch it one more time. He stumbled there in the beginning with something. Unlocking some of the other edge defenders, you know, how do you get a, yeah. like, like when they're kind of in a slump like this, how do you get more pressures out of them? You know what? <clears throat> That's one thing as coaches that we got to continue to try to figure out on. Um, and I guess I can't say figure out, keep coaching our guys on how. I, I got to figure it out. Uh, I guess I can't, because he did, he's fucking realized, oh shit, we kind of expose ourselves. We don't know how to figure out how to get some fucking pressure right now. Yeah. That is not a good sign. That is not a good sign. Not, not great, uh, not great hearing your defensive coach say that. And like, the, <laughs> and the sacks are overrated that like, no, they're not like sacks help stop drives. Sacks take you from second and, and six to third and 16. Mm -hmm. Like that's a big fucking difference. And getting home, finishing, you know, everybody likes to finish. So, Aiden needs to. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm sorry. If you're not going to send a blitz, you need him to be him. Because none of these other guys are going to do it. So, I like the idea of sending Branch. Maybe send Jerry. We've seen Jerry do things before in the backfield. Getting yeah. tackles for loss, stuff like that. I Cam think... Sutton's a good tackler. You know, you're going to have to start sending guys, getting creative with these blitzes. Because it's not working when you rush for I think Branch is the number one guy you, you want to go send on those blitzes because he's he's done like he has done a good job doing it. I think in terms of like I don't even if, if it's rookie DBs or just all rookies, but he's like second for TFLs mm -hmm. with like seven or eight of them. Like as a rookie, that's that's pretty good. I feel like to be ranked there on top of the fact that he's missed games, on top of the fact that he plays DB to to be leading like your class in, in TFLs is, is pretty fucking impressive. 
And I, I, I'm with Nick. I actually I love that idea of just blitzing Branch a lot more. We saw it when we went to the Atlanta game, too. Yeah. I know you were half alive for that one, yeah, but like, that was, that was... Branch was getting, I, I think that was a game. Did he have the 15 tackles in that? Or he had, I don't know if it was 15. He was going he was crazy. Going crazy yeah. in that game. He was everywhere. He popped, including the backfield. And I, I think Pop Bijan a couple times. One. Three TFLs, 11 tackles. Yeah, he was everywhere in that game. And yeah. that's what I see from Branch is that quick explosiveness that you need to hit the gap mm -hmm. and just completely. Um, just tear up the backfield there and we need a change because we've seen we gave Jordan Love all day to throw the ball and you see what happens like not great quarterbacks are going to look great when this happens so AG needs to step up this whole entire defense needs to step it up and hopefully it starts with New Orleans yeah you don't have the guys on the front line to be able to get there without trying to do something else holy you, shit you don't have it most TFLs among defensive backs this season Brian Branch number two hell yeah that's amongst all DBs, like not just rookie DBs. Yeah, dude, he makes plays. He gets in the backfield when he get. He's a very, very good tackler. When he gets his hands on you, you're going to the ground. So, that is something I would like to see. But well, I mean, go ahead. If they just keep sending four and not getting pressure, they're not going to win in the playoffs. And I don't even know if like, because I, I, again, I I'm, no, I'm of the God, belief please, that no, this no. defense lacks personnel. I am of the belief this defense 100 percent lacks personnel. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's kind of obvious for everybody. I think that's why, I, I mean, I, you guys know I was pissed off the trade deadline. So it's like, okay, I, I understand the J, AG sounds at a loss with the trying to figure out like what they can do to get that pressure. I don't know if I want to blame him as a defensive coordinator and, and the lack thereof, or then the, the, the personnel at that point. But if you, you know, it's a fucking issue. Like you, you obviously, you, you can't find like the, the fix to it. I just, I don't know, man. It's not a good... And again, the Detroit Lions are going to make the playoffs. Yeah. We're going to make the playoffs. We're more likely going to host a playoff game. We're going to win the division. Yeah, so I'm not bitching for the now. I don't want people to go... Like, oh, like, I don't want the, 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 the fucking super fans when the Detroit Lions go on and win this Sunday. I don't want you guys coming in Monday. Like, oh, you're talking all that shit. No, like, they're going to make the playoffs. They're going to win. It's just when they go up against they're gonna these teams. They're going to win this week. Yeah, exactly. When they go up against these teams that are above 500, or they're going to finish the season 500. Or with very good quarterbacks. It's going to be ugly, bro. It's going to be fucking ugly. Mm -hmm. Until they figure it out. And he had to stop himself from saying they haven't figured it out. ZZZ Lions. Not a good Bruce sign. will be activated, bro. If Bruce Irvin is the guy you are hoping that is the savior of this defense, you're in for a rude awakening. Like, I think he's going to be better than anybody else, possibly. You know, if he gets his cataracts done and, and is, the early bird special isn't happening, maybe he'll be able to go out there and get some sacks. But I don't have these high expectations of Bruce Irvin being this game changer for the Lions defense. He's not going to be a game changer. James Houston changer, is the say. guy that James you should Houston be waiting for. James Houston is the guy that you should be like, all right, he's coming back soon. We can bank on that at least. He's what was late December is what they're saying for mm -hmm. Houston. But then so, again, too, I don't know if they're talking about like him coming back to actual play or him activating his 21-day window. You know, Obviously, I hope it is a play because I think the Dallas game could be crucial for us. At least it'd be a good test of where they're at. I get the Dallas Cowboys are all hyped in there right now, too, but similar to us, the resume is built off of dead bodies like hey, hey, they never really played anybody and anybody they have played they fucking lost to yeah including nobody lost to in, in the arizona cardinals too so i am uh we're fucked <laughs> when it comes to playoffs guys i'm sorry it's, it's I, I have no faith beyond any like minnesota team we might see that the detroit is gonna get it done i mean good chance to see i was gonna fall apart though they play again tonight yeah is that two thursday nights in a row for them i don't know but it's a good game sunday night last week. seattle dallas right yeah seattle dallas should be a good game I think it's going to be a good game, too. Hopefully my boy Zach Charbonnet goes off. Need him. I got 40 yards rushing. Hey. Three we receptions. We got a segment. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'll save it. I'll save it. Save it for the show. All right. Wah. 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 I think that's the answer, though. And, and I'm not I'm not a different quarterback by any means. But How many sacks do you bridge. think we get against the Saints? Fuck, man. One. Hutch. One? I'm going to say one and a touch. Just be finally, like, gets back to the quarterback. He needs one. I'm about to look and see if they even get Three and a half. Sacks. Three and a half sacks. Three and a half sacks. Are you crazy? I'm a hand. Call me crazy. <laughs> call me crazy. <laughs> Just don't call me for dinner. No, I think I think that like I said, I, I know I've said this the past fucking three weeks and it hasn't happened, but I think the Lions are gonna get up early. They're gonna run the ball. As long as they don't turn the ball over, this is the, the script for how this team wins. Sorry, I can't predict six turnovers in two weeks by your quarterback. But yeah. if, if they go in there and they don't turn the ball over, they should be able to run the ball, get up, and that's going to force Derek Carr to try to be Superman. He's going to take some time back there. The Lions will get to him. Three and a half. Why? I mean, he was getting sacked a lot to begin the season, but it's kind of calmed down a bit. 
I say Atlanta's a respectable defense as well. That's like the most recent one. Only got sacked once there. Twice against Minnesota. Zero against Chicago. Austin one, Harris, one. we were getting zero sacks. Oof. I could see it, bro. I, I could see it too. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm more confident in zero right now than I, if, if I could bet the line. Yeah, a million percent would take the under. What do you think it's even at if it was set? One and a half, probably. Nick, I mean, you, you gamble as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the under, whatever it is. I have no. What do you think faith it would be set at though? What it like? Maybe like, yeah, two and a half, one and a half, two and a half. But I just want to bring this one back. Like you guys remember a few years ago, the whole bend don't break. Like this is literally what it's taking we me don't back talk about to. That here. I didn't. I didn't say a name. I'm just saying I'm having nightmares Nick, while I'm watching these games. We don't <laughs> fucking talk about. No, that. I'm serious. We can't get any pressure. It's like, come on, Brad did not make a move for a lineman or a cornerback. I'm upset watching in Fort Field. This crowd, the crowd's going crazy. We're all ready for it. We have to watch the quarterback sit back with 10 seconds of no pressure. It's frustrating as a fan and. Like I said earlier, maybe bring Brian Branch on something, but we just need to we need to see a change. By the way, uh, Shaq Griffin picked up by the uh, Green Bay Packers and waivers, so don't be mad about at Brad for that one. That's like based on your record. Waiver priority, yeah. Yeah, the Packers had first dibs in that. Yeah, one. that sucks.